Amanda, it was good with coffee with your girl Amara La Negra, and you're listening to Exactly Amara, a production of iHeartRadio. I am so excited because today we're celebrating our cultura all Ooh, year around. Yes. We're celebrating, yes, we're celebrating how proud we are of our ancestors, where we our come from, our salami, our important. queso frito, our salami, yes, all that good <laughs> stuff, our music, our culture, all those amazing things, you know, um, as Latinos, and I think that also, as Latina, as a Black woman, as a Afro-Latina, as a woman in this country overall, I'm proud of all those things. It is so important for us to talk about the National Hispanic Heritage Month and why we should celebrate it all year round and not just like a one-month thing, kind of like how they do with Black History Month, which is so annoying to me that they just do it like one month. Let's celebrate it all year around because all year around we're doing amazing things all around the world. The importance of Latinos in our culture, Latinos in media, in the entertainment industry, and Latinos every day in life. So today I'm super excited because we have amazing guests. But before I even get to that, okay, I have to siempre, mi amor, this show wouldn't be the same Without my co-host Stevie Nunez or Stevie Nunez, you know I add the sazón and the adobo to everything. Add sazón, yo le pongo sazón. You talk about wait, wait, bueno, me pongo un merengue ahora, pero fefita. Talking about Hispanic Heritage Month, we definitely need to talk about all the amazing politicians we have um, that are playing important roles that really make an impact not only the Latino community, but in the United States and the uh, the community overall. Um, we have amazing athletes, también. Ven aquí, a ti, a ti te gusta los deportes. You like sports? Um, uh, if I like the athletes, of course I do. They're beautiful. <laughs> oh my God, Stevie. I know I you feel like, like the athletes, athletes have the best is... bodies. Like, why do you think Jayla was with A-Rod? Oye, why do you think otro. Victor Cruz? Oh. Athletes are beautiful. Bueno. As a Dominicana, I have to talk about the Dominicanos that are making it happen. Robinson Cano, Edwin Encarnacion, like you said, Alex Rodriguez, amongst many. You see how important... Sammy Big Sosa. Papi. Do you know how important it is? Big Papi. Like, all these important Latinos that have impacted in so many different ways. I don't know too much about, you know, scientists, but I know that in the science department and uh, todo lo que tiene que ver con la medicina, they've also been impactful in the entertainment industry. Of course, we know a lot of Latinos that have been impactful. Um, I'll start with one. I go with one and you go with the other one. Okay. Okay. Cela Cruz. Yes, go. Mark Anthony. Oh, wait, Gloria Stefan. Uh ooh, okay. Um Emilio. Uh, Mark Anthony. Yes, Emilio oh, yes. Stefan. Gloria Stefan. Um, Mark Anthony. Selena uh, baby. Oh, Can't forget. Leon. oh my Selena, god. Yes. Fernandito Villalona. Um, Los Tigres del Norte. I don't know. Babe, oh listen, my. we got to diversify. Yes, Jenny Rivera. There's so many. The list goes on and on and on and on. Oh, I know another one, too. I bet you won't know this one. De Honduras, Casabe. Porque Casabe, si sabe. You see, this is a great thing. It's not just about, like, the Caribbeans, pero eh, del Salvador, de Honduras, Guatemala, Chile. Uh, I mean, Argentina. The list goes on of how versatile we are and how amazing we are, how impactful we've been in so many different departments as actors, como maestros, as doctors. I mean, like, we have truly... Immigrants, no matter how much they want to... You know, because there's always a little group of people that are like, oh, we don't want to know about immigrants and kick them out of here and we don't want them here and all this. Shut up, okay? Because Thank without you. immigrants in this country, we shape our nation. We right. shape this country. You know, right. this country wouldn't have been the same without us because a lot of the times, guess who does the hard work? We do. While right. they want to do the cutesy stuff, the Latinos that come here, mira mi amor, sudando, sacrificing, eh, pasando la frontera, all types of things. We're the ones that really make what this country is. And um, talking uh, hello, about Hello, a that, lot of um, Latinos, you... a lot of Latinos work for $5 an hour and uh, help build a lot of corporations in this country. Okay, we are, we are the backbone the of this country. A lot of us are the backbone of the country. And let's not even talk about Puerto Rico, how they made us, um, they haven't made us a state, but they made us a part of the country because I, they needed us. We never asked to be a part of the country. 
they needed us. I don't know what they have up in that country that they need. I do know, but you know, that's I don't want the government coming after me. But I know that th- that they need uh-huh. us. We are very important. And we are not just the help, you know. We are not just there's so many um second generational like people that have came here. Like I'm a kid of an immigrant, you know, parent. You know what I mean? I'm I'm that mm. person, but we're going to have some, such amazing guests today that actually are kids and, and have Everything. been very successful from, Amer- you know, that have migrated to this country. And it's awesome. I can't wait. I cannot wait to bring on our guests. And that's why today's show is so important. Today is, is one of those shows that I want you guys to really pay attention. The Latinx community, just the Latinos. If you come from parents that immigrated to this country, this conversation is for you. Um, And for those that don't understand why we're so passionate, or for those that still feel a certain type of way about immigrants coming to this country, that's why it was so important for me to have a very close friend of mine who also is an immigrant agent, who also fought for this country as an immigrant, who also came to this country to succeed, to provide a better future for his family, for his country, um, my friend, Franz. So, Franz, are you there? Thank you, thank you. I'm great, I'm great. I don't know if I'm too loud or if it's okay, the volume. No, you're fine. This is speak deeply to me when it comes to uh, immigration. Before I even speak of myself, um, I remember at the beginning, Amala was talking about why don't we have, you know, a whole, uh, a whole year. Well, uh, a brief history, you know, when I- Hispanic month came in into place it was one week they used to give you guys it, it wasn't until 1968 democratic president lyndon b johnson declared that it should be a whole month mm. and then 20 years later in 1988 president Re- republican president reagan signed it into law where they should have that celebrate for a whole month mm. and the reason being that it celebrated within september 15 to october 15 is because this is when most of latin american country or hispanic countries they gained their independence from spain it was on september 15 the majority so that's the reason why they keep the september 15 but i agree with you it should be a whole year okay anyway that was a brief history for what you just said thank earlier. you so, thank you it was a very educational moment see i didn't <laughs> know that and i love learning things yeah i mean that's fine so um I am an uh, authorized representative for immigration. I came here myself. I did political asylum with the whole process. I kept my head on straight. I was qualified for political asylum. I gave my green card. I joined the military. I signed in August 8, um, 2006. And I started boot camp on January 7, 2007. And I served for 14 years in the military, valiantly fought for this country mm. as an immigrant the very people they say let them stay in their country let them not do anything so i was one of the people who came here proud and remain proud and do what i gotta do so when they keep on saying close the borders one thing they have to understand with immigration and with immigrants in general it's because of the separation of people and country and land that we are in this condition for example if you are in the continent of africa Everyone in this continent, whether you're from Djibouti, Somalia, Gabon, anywhere, they call you African, right? Mm-hmm. But in America, you in Latin American country, they call you Latin American, they call you this, they call you that. But we are in the continent of America. Technically, we are Americans. Mm-hmm. But this country claimed the name of American to give titles to different people. Now... We're not going to be bashing USA or anything like that. That's not what we're doing. But we're just trying to make sure that our people are educated enough to understand when you are here, not only you're an American according to to the land separation, but you are also part of this great nation that that is being built. And this nation is built almost entirely on the backs of immigrants, almost entirely, because you're going to see like... People like Senator Marco Rubio, I mean, his family were, they were, they were immigrants. You have so many other people in, 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 in politics. Had it not been for the people coming in mm-hmm. to do exactly what they had to do to process the case paperwork, like you said, Amara, a lot of people from the border of Mexico crossing, going to Panama, El Salvador, before they get to Mexico, they got raped, they got killed. Some people, they got their family murdered in front of them. They cannot do anything about it. So um, when it comes to really strong education, as far as, Helping people do political asylum when they come in here. Helping people 
uh, getting their green card, helping them if they if they find a family members or applying for a visa. So we are here to help them to make sure they keep their head on straight and they do what they got to do and they remain in this country and work, bring their family in and build in their land to where they came from. France, I have a question. Do you feel that the immigration laws um, in the past two years or so have become more beneficial towards the Latino community or do you feel that there hasn't been any progress since the new uh, since our new president? Um, right now, it's kind of hard because it's still at a steady place because of so much Trump had done with so many rules that he had come up with. So Biden had to reverse many laws, that many, many, many decisions that he has taken. For example, one of which was the public charge rule. The public charge rule was something stated in February 24, 2020, uh, when it says that, let's say, if you were to marry someone, it was to go under the affidavit of support. Let's say I marry somebody, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, a, a woman. Mm -hmm. And then I'm making a hundred thousand a year. Mm -hmm. So according to what I'm making, she was able to get the green card easily. But when Trump said the public charge will in effect, it simply means that they don't go by my income anymore. They go by, okay, let's say, oh, you're from Dominican Republic. Oh, you know what? I feel like within two years, you, you're going to become a public charge, meaning you're going to ask for benefits. You're going to take up all our money and the immigration officer can decide at that point of time not to give you the green card, oh, wow. which was terrible. Right. So that's terrible. And this one, to some degree, is still in effect because Biden cannot overrule every single thing he had done. But we are in the maze of confusionary immigration. And another thing, because there's so many backlogs, Things that usually used to take a year to process, let's say if you apply for your son or daughter, it used to take a year. Now it can take all the way up to two years depending on what office it, uh, it is it in. Did the pandemic really affect the way uh, these cases are being run now? Like the pandemic, it slowed the process a lot or is it back open? Is it, was it still running? What happened for those people that had open cases? Um, the pandemic really affect a lot of things because as we can see the entire world as, it, as if it is being redone. Like uh, not a lot of offices were closed and a lot of cases were pushed back and some applications that were done wrongly, like when they send it back to you, now it's taking even way more time. That's the reason why recently about like, a month ago, Biden signed something where even let's say somebody who got married with someone, they're going to assign officers where they're going to open immigration on Saturday. So pretty shortly, you're going to see some people start getting interviews on Saturday, things that never happen in, in immigration here. So that's a progress. And he just hired a lot of immigration officers to review cases because the backlog in immigration is as much as the backlog in IRS now for your tax. So it's really really bad but they are making progress because he's making every effort to hire more immigration agents mm. absolutely so um just yourself i would like to hear more about france uh, about you um so you came from haiti mi hermano de haiti right yes um yes. tell us a little bit about your pro like your family coming here did you come on your own did your family come and what were the the goals that you like as an immigrant, because I know my dad was an immigrant. Do you come here with goals or do you just play by ear? What what is it that you wanted to to accomplish in America? Because listen, I was raised in America, right? And I know how my Dominican family views America. They think it's like the American dream and all of this. And I'm like, well, I live in the projects the in the, in the hood, you know. You, I'm sending money to you, but we're also struggling on our end. We're not as rich as you think we are. You know, um, what was the your experience? I want to know about the France experience. Mm -hmm. Well, um, back when I was in Haiti, I was a cop. So I served in the country of Haiti for five years. And then um, after a while, I decided to come here on my own. I didn't have, you know, my mom had passed away in 98. My dad was in the military when the military got dissolved in Haiti. Um, we didn't have any hope anymore because he was only the sole provider. So when I became a cop, I was the sole provider now in my family, including taking care of my dad and uh, a sister, brother, all of them older than me. So uh, as I was coming to the state, I put in my head, you know what? I love writing and I love, you know, guns. You know, that's the reason why I serve in the police. I knew I was going to be serving in the military here. Mm. I had that in my mind and to continue with my writing career. 
So as soon as I land in this country, like I said before, um, I applied for political asylum. I won the case and quickly applied for the military, which was continue on following my dream. While I was in the military, I was on deployment in Spain. This is when I wrote my first book while I was in the military. Mm. So every single thing that I've done, I calculate everything. That doesn't mean I don't make mistakes here. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm of saying course. is I keep my head on straight to the vision. And when I have a setback, I kept myself up and I drug myself up and I kept going. We, this is a very important topic. For me, it was important to not just celebrate um, just thinking about Hispanic Heritage Month, but thinking about immigrants in this country. I know that DACA and I know that, you know, the Dreamers have, has been a really big topic um, that we've all seen on national TV. We've seen on social media. We've seen people protesting. We've seen all these things. Do you, can you update us a little bit on the laws with DACA and for those those students that want to, or those children that were born in this country and are going to school, for those that are out of the country that want to come to this country to study, um, what would be the right steps? How has the law been beneficial for the Latino community to uh, study in this country and so on? You know, this, this topic can go on and on. I can talk to you forever about all these immigration <laughs> issues because I feel that we really need to get uh, informed and study these things, but it'll mm -hmm. go for it. Uh, well, uh, with the whole DACA, it's still in the, it's still on the table, so it's not fully, it's not fully resolved yet. But as far as you know, uh, children coming here to study, whether they come legally or illegally, there are different routes. Let's say they come as a refugee. There's there are specific programs which they can be part of until then, because they're not gonna re refuse anyone medical care or refuse anyone education in this country just because you are an immigrant. Of course, there's some universities and colleges you would need to have your, I mean, your legal paper. Right. Now, there are different other countries now, uh, um, I mean, Haiti included, and El Salvador and other places, Venezuela, where they can also uh, acquire TPS now with the new law that just uh, came about. And in immigration, you can have as many as two, three cases, you know, um, open until everything is resolved. Because remember when I said, you know, uh, um, the former president really made a mess out of almost a lot of things in immigration. And there are certain things when they are done, it is not as easy as one, two, three to get them undone. But this is something where a lot of um, social activists are fighting right now to see how the DACA program can come back into the place again so that those children can have a possibility and a venue where they can uh, uh, be protected and then to study and to stay in this country. Is there a phone number, uh, 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 Instagram page, a platform where people can reach out to you if they want more information as far as immigration that you can kind of guide them through? Mm -hmm. uh, well, right now they can contact me on my phone, which is 786-487-2037. And I do have another Instagram page also, which I'm going to be creating. But so far right now, they can contact me on my organization because I do have a non-profit organization where I help. I go a lot in Haiti about four times a year and I have awesome. 120 kids that I pay school for to go to school free in Haiti. Wow. So, um, Hand International Inc. On that page, they can find me. Hand International Inc. The I... Hand stands for Human Assistance for Necessary Development. Oh, okay. Look at you. We're so proud to have you on our show today. Thank you so much for being such an amazing person, for being such an amazing human, for helping, supporting, yes. for being a hope and guide, not only for other Haitians in your country, uh, for other immigrants in this country as well. They can look, at, look up to you as an inspiration. They can also serve in the military. They can also figure out ways to provide a better future for their family. And I am so grateful to have you on today's show. <laughs> So before we end the show, Amara, I just want to ask you, you know, X, I love how I say that, X, um, how did, what was your immigration experience with um, Mama Annie? Um, oh, hell no, you're not about to mess up my mama's name. No, Maria. I didn't mess up her name. You know what it is? No, no, no. You know what it is? The other day, real quick and real brief, they put Mami Annie on the internet, so it confused the hell out of me. It's Mami Anna. Ready? And you know, that's my titi. All right, ready? I was born here in Miami. That's what I was talking about. It's about how amazing it is to have those parents that are willing to sacrifice their lives to give us a better future because I had the opportunity of being born here in America with, you know, many possibilities. And thanks to those sacrifices, I'm here today. So 
I personally didn't have those immigration issues, but I definitely can relate and understand the pain of those that do because I got to see it with my own eyes. I got to see like my mom working with no papers and then later on they didn't want to pay her and they would, you know, tell her all the time, oh, we're going to call immigration on you and all these terrible things that a lot of immigrants have to go through in this country. Um, but I just wanted to say, tomar ese momento, de verdad que sí. How hard was it for you to have to go all the time to the store and have to help your mom? Like, I, I always had to be the translator for my tias from Dominican Republic. Yeah. The language was yeah. very... I was always like, this little kid... And you know what? I seen this the other day because now I'm in Florida. I seen this little boy. He must have been only like seven. Ayudando su padre. Doing, being that person. He was at the store. And el, um, and he's like, my parents want this. And what did your parents say? And he was like the mediator. And it was just translator. And it was just so nice at an yeah. early age that we have to take that initiative and, you know, and that leadership you know what, you know, position. Did you ever go through this too? Did you ever go through this too? My mom always felt when I was younger and still to this day because I know how to fi I know how to speak English, I should be able to fix anything. Well, like fix this. Well, don't you know English? I'm like, yeah, but that doesn't mean I know how to do it. And do you know what I'm saying? But these are all real life situations. Um I I really really wish that I could have stayed with France even a little bit longer because I have so many questions and not just for me but questions for like other people that want to like you know come out of their country that want to get a visa they want to get a, a tourist visa they want to get a work permit they want to get married that have children that want to bring them to this country like there are so many questions there's endless endless immigration questions that I could ask all day because I know that there's a lot of people that want to know. I'm also going to be putting um, France, which is the immigration agent. I'm going to be putting all his information on exactly Amada's page so that you guys can contact him, talk to him directly. If you need any guidance, if you need any help, if you have, if you feel like you're lost, if you want to start anything, whatever the case may be, he got you. And also, if you also want to support his foundation that helps, uh, you know, the children and all the people in Haiti, you can also do that as well. Because you know that our brothers and sisters are out there in Haiti right now just went through a terrible tragedy and they need our love and support right now as yes, well. Absolutely. So with that being said, orgullosa de ser dominicana, orgullosa de ser latina. I know that Stevie, you are as well. Okay. Eh, 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 today eh, was an amazing eh, eh, show. Hey. Mira, don't get me started. It is a wrap, okay? Yeah, it's a wrap. Gracias, mi gente, de verdad que sí. Don't forget to join us each Thursday for all new episodes of Exactly Amara. You can also find us on Instagram and on Twitter at Amara La Negra ALN, also at Exactly Amara. And of course, you have to follow us at My Cultura Podcast on Instagram. Stevie, what are your social media so they can follow you too? It's Stevie Nunez, that's S T E V E Y N E W N E Z. And I know I look like Stevie a general hoy, a general. Boom, boom, mommy, mommy, no me. <laughs> what a great mommy. show. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> hey, exactly. Yes. And also, all of our episodes are available on YouTube by searching Amara La Negra or um, or exactly Amara. Um, you can find all the episodes just in case you want to watch it again. We got you. This has been such a great and amazing show. I am so happy and excited. This has been a production of iHeartRadio's My Cultura Podcast Network. For more podcasts from iHeart, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. You already know we're lit. We got you. And we're celebrating our cultura all year long. Ya tu sabes que lo que. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be back next Thursday with more. Exactly.